Welcome to Undiet Your Coaching Podcast. I'm Stephanie Dodier, clinical nutritionist and creator of the Going to Be on the Food Method. And I'm on a mission to help all coaches undiet their life and their coaching business. Ready? Let's do this. Welcome back to the show, folks. Today, we have an interview with one of my students from the Non-Diet Mentorship Program. And we're going to really be intentional for this interview to focus on life coaches, life coaching, because that's what Elizabeth, our guest for today is, and how her approach to coaching has changed after going through the Non-Diet Mentorship Curriculum and the result that is creating for her and her client as well. And we're going to talk globally also about what we're both seeing in life coaching. So she has a lot of value for people to share through her own story, specifically for life coaching. So that's why I wanted to highlight her journey. And I'm also like mind blown of her own result in her life and how much coaching from a trauma informed approach has change her personally. So I'm going to dig into that as well. So welcome to the show, Elizabeth. Thank you so much, Stephanie. I'm really excited. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Thank you. You're welcome. So she's, she'll get into our intro, but she's a life coach trained in thought work. So I gave her that thought because my interviews are not like pre-formatted with question and all structured. They're like free flow. And she was having, her brain was having opinions about that. And I said, Girl, you have a PhD into what we're about to talk about, your own story. Do you feel ready to go do it? Yes, I'm excited. I love that. (laughs) So who is Elizabeth? You want to introduce yourself? Yes. So I'm Elizabeth Villegas. I am a life coach, but I consider, I guess what I call myself is a body image coach. And I had originally started actually weight loss coaching, so... That's kind of how I went into thought work with weight loss in mind, but I was already in a place where I was kind of struggling with the idea of, you know, just the way that we see our bodies is also a thought and the way that we are taught is to hate our bodies and we can decide to love our bodies, but the idea of loving our bodies as it is, but also changing it, it just didn't make sense to me it brought a lot of conflict and then I was exposed to body image work where we do let go of weight loss and we do love our body that as it is and when I realized oh my god I can just love my body why would I then what it, there's no point like why would I even bother with this whole weight loss thing if everything I want I can create with my own mind, then it just doesn't, I don't need to go that other route. I just didn't know this route was even possible. So now I coach diet culture dropouts, women that have decided to stop dieting, but they just don't know how to live their life anymore. It's when you're in diet culture your whole life, you don't even know how to eat anymore, how to think for yourself you don't know how to be in a world without dieting. So that's who I want to help, help women navigate their non-diet life. So yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. It's a beautiful introduction. And it says a lot about your personal journey. Like you started in the quote, traditional life coaching format, which is a fat phobic perspective of life coaching. Like, for sure, everybody wants to lose weight. What do you mean? It's just part of the life coaching industry. We'll come back on that. But like showing people through your introduction on how you change in a very short period of time, just highlight what is possible. So let's call spade a spade. The life coaching industry is mostly fat phobic. Yes. Yeah. It's one of those things where we haven't gotten to a place where fat phobia is kind of shun like homophobia now it's almost like how can you be homophobic like why would you say that we haven't gotten to a place where fat phobia is seen as like we don't want fat phobia in this world it's still very acceptable to make little comments like oh I don't want to gain weight or 
I don't that meal really made me gain five pounds. It's just like so acceptable. And we haven't gotten to a place where we don't kind of watch what we're saying when it comes to our bodies or other people's bodies. Yeah. Let's just all think for like, for those who are not that are listening to this and are not from the life coaching industry, you may not like for you may be like surprising to think, but in a life coaching industry, it's still okay for you to put out life coaching skills or strategy to dislike your body and to want to change your body. And it's politically okay to do that. It's the last ism I can see in the life coaching industry that is still acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. In a lot of feminist groups too, it's still one of those last things need to be addressed. (laughs) Yeah. And the result of that for professional like us is that we are taught to coach other people with the, well, it's just right to not accept your body. It's just like, we don't have the skill set to coach any other way. So we end up coaching a lot at the, what I call the thought level, because it's acceptable to have these thoughts. It's okay to have these thoughts and we're not digging any further than that. Would you say that's a good representation? Yeah, definitely. The way I see life coaching and weight loss presented it's changing your thoughts so you can change your actions which is like don't eat the donut why are you eating the donut what is your thought around that versus like your thoughts about the donut and like why you see it as a villain like it's mostly like changing your action of eating the donut and getting yourself to restrict versus seeing everything as neutral it is yeah it's very when, when you came and I got the permission for her to talk about that. But when you came to me, you hadn't yet done intuitive eating process. Like you hadn't yet learned what it is to be an intuitive eater. So that's part of the work we did in the program together. And when you started looking at your thoughts about food, it was very revealing on how you had coach yourself prior from a weight loss angle around food versus intuitive eating. That was very, it was nice for me to watch, but I'm sure it was very powerful for you to see your thoughts about food. Yeah, I think I was doing just surface level, (laughs) surface level type of coaching. And when I did it through the intuitive eating steps, which I had never done. Yeah, it revealed so much of scarcity around food. I think a lot of it was scarcity, just scarcity not to eat the food, not to throw it away. It just a lot of anxiety surrounding food. So it was very interesting. And I'm glad I did it because without having done it, the process, I wouldn't have gotten to see all of the things that were there and holding me back from having a much better relationship with food. So what you're saying is before we started to work together, you thought you knew what intuitive eating was putting yourself through the process, like the official, like step-by-step process. You realize it wasn't what you thought it was. Yeah. I thought I had, I'm still going to give myself credit. I did a lot of work around good foods and bad foods and trying to get neutral with food, but there was still so much more there that Mm. I didn't even hit because I I think that is what you were saying about the thought level. I was just neutralizing things, but not going towards seeing what happens when I get to the uncomfortable fullness. What are my thoughts there? Or when I get to a comfortable fullness, what is coming up for me when I want to stop eating, but I'm anxious and feeling scarcity around throwing away food, like all of the kind of the nuances and all the little everything basically that has nothing to do just like with what you think about food is all the things I did not even do. So it was very surface level. I think my work that I did and going into this process was so much deeper. 
And there's well, still so much more. <laughs> and I want to give yourself credit in which, again, most life coaching certification teach coaching at the thought level, right? So again, I'm assuming it's life coaches listening to this, but for those who don't, our thoughts come from somewhere. Like you can coach at the thought level, but that thought will keep rehappening until you find out where it's coming from. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So most life coaching is at the thought level. It's not at the belief trauma, systemic issue, social construct, and these things keep staying in your brain and they keep producing the thought that creates the anxiety. Yeah, it's definitely just change your thought. But if it's always coming up in different ways, you're not seeing where it came from. Like, why is this happening over and over again? Yeah, we, I feel like that isn't always addressed the oppression and fat phobia and just all of that isn't in there to understand why I'm feeling really anxious to throw away this bagel. Like, yeah. or to look at myself in the mirror in body image. Yeah. Right. right. Yeah. To wear the shorts. Yeah. Yeah. The, the wear to show that's both of our story to wear shorts <laughs> through body image. Right. So let's talk about this because off like the way that I teach coaching, like, yes, thoughts, create feeling, feeling, create action and result. However, we also have to go at the belief and social construct level and systemic in order for us and our client to see that their thoughts are not broken. Their brain is not broken. It's not their fault. There's a thing called fat phobia that creates this thought that makes you feel this way nothing's gone wrong. (laughs) Everything is normal. Yeah. Right. Like most coaching framework don't address it this way. And people, I hear often this thing, Oh, my stupid brain. Oh, my brain is broken. Do you hear the same thing in your circle? Oh yeah. And I've even like uttered those words too. Like, why can't I just get this? It's very easy to just blame yourself when of course, this is why I keep thinking this. Like, even when I have thoughts of like, my brain will be like, ooh, if we work out today, we could maybe burn this many calories. <laughs> and for a while, it was like, God, why do you keep thinking this? I'm supposed to be living a non diet life. I must not be good at what I'm doing. I'm like a fraud because these thoughts are here. I'm just blaming myself again when, of course, I'm going to keep thinking these thoughts. This is how the world is right now. We don't have to kind of fuel that fire. So the normalization piece that you brought into the program is huge. It's very huge because it opens up the door for compassion. Yes. And safety. Can we talk about safety? (laughs) Yes, we can definitely talk about safety, the story of my life. That's like my next book. (laughs) Let's just bring this into, I'm going to give a little bit of background to people listening to that. So when we coach only at the thought level, we bypass, we gas lit ourselves, we gaslight ourselves, we bypass all the past experience, our family upbringing, social construct, trauma, we bypass all of this. And then we just exactly what you said, keep blaming as to why we have the thought when we go a layer deeper. And I know to many coaches, that's scary. It's scary to go to that place because you're not well versed in that. But when you go there, you are actually addressing why the thought comes up and then you can actually create safety and normalize the thought. How's been your experience through that? I think when you started talking about safety and how our current identity feels safe, even though it's not the one that we currently want, but it is our safe zone, that just blew my mind because it made so much sense why going into this new way of living seems like a threat. Even though I desire that and I want it, the reason I'm 
struggling to get there is because I'm seeing that as unsafe. And the way I'm living right now, or my current thoughts about like food or scarcity seem safe for me, because at some point that was safe for me. That really changed a lot for me and stepping into what we call a new model or just a new identity, a new belief will only work when you're creating safety to step towards that. And that's been a lot of my work is creating safety to make a post on Instagram or even be okay with throwing away the bagel. Like these little things where I'm holding my own hand along this journey. That's been the biggest game changer for me, I think, in like progressing because I've been stuck many times and looping in the same patterns, not realizing why I can't just change my thoughts. (laughs) Why am I not good at this? It's because I never was creating safety. Even just when you spoke about consent, that too was just like, oh my gosh, like I'm wanting this thing, but I'm not consenting with myself. I'm just trying to force myself and make myself change and not see eye to eye with me. So that I think is just, I really can't even explain it. It's just been the thing I've been missing this whole time. And I want to put that in an example, like very concrete, because this is professional listening to that and other coaches. Like if you've ever found yourself quote, being inconsistent with your business, like your posts and also the poof, you dropped off the face of the earth. And then it takes like so much effort to come back. It's because marketing your business is feeling unsafe. Right. And the way through, you can coach yourself to the thoughts and creating the action, but it's not going to last for long because the belief, the trauma, the peace underneath is still there vibrating, waiting to come back up. Oh, yeah. And that was my journey for many years of just pushing through trying to change my thoughts, but then burning out and not being seen for months, just hiding that that's kind of my go to is I show up and like, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna do this like in a forceful way. Obviously, they're good intentions. I really want to reach the goals. But the way I was going about it is through forcing myself to be motivated, forcing myself to be disciplined instead of the safety piece. And that's why I kept after a couple weeks or even days of just showing up online, I would just like completely be offline for weeks, months, because there was no safety there in showing up online. So yeah. But I, just, I want to highlight the parallel to diet culture, right? So you and I, and most people listening have had an ex, like extended amount of experience forcing themselves to eat a certain way, forcing themselves to go to the gym. And who we are in one thing is how we are everywhere, unless we coach ourselves out of that pattern. So when we've developed an identity of pushing through, because that's the only way, right? Right. Then we push through everything in our life. That's how we approach all the circumstance in our life by pushing through them. Yeah. Yeah. That's (laughs) when you think of like all the diets that I've been on, it's like, okay, you're bracing yourself and pushing, making yourself go to the gym. Like, you know how they are like no pain no gain yes <laughs> it's like all those little like thoughts like y- you'll never regret this you'll regret the one you don't do it's like yeah it I feel like I just transferred some of that into business for sure yeah well I think we do it not because we want to do it this way that's the only way we're being taught to do business right and what's missing is the basic human how to handle the brain, like, yeah, you can bypass the emotion of anxiety, but at some point by suppressing the anxiety, it's going to become so big that it's going to completely paralyze you. Your brain will always win and it will paralyze you. If it feels unsafe to market yourself, trust me, your brain will find a way to not market you. Yeah. Yeah. I think there was that 
you posted a graphic where there's two circles and then they overlap and one side culture and one is like oppressive hustle marketing culture or something like that and they're very similar in like the oppressive systems on both and that's why you can tell like when you're kind of doing what you used to do in diet culture in your business because we didn't work through that oppression. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about how you're creating safety now. What does that like? And this is for people who've never heard of that. They're like, what does that look like? Like, what does that mean? Creating safety for yourself now? Can you give us an example? Yeah, I think for me, a lot of it is in the way I talk to myself. There's the moments before, like I will make a reel or I will post something online. There's the moments before and how I'm getting myself to do that action, noticing is this consensual or forceful and getting to a consensual place with myself, not Liz, you need to do this. You said you were going to do this, Liz. Like if we don't do this, this just means we're behind yet again. Like that conversation versus I know this is scary for you and I'm here for you and you're courageous and you're brave and I'm going to be here no matter what. I know you're afraid, but we can do this. Like it, the, just a the conversation there mm. is completely different and being with whatever emotions come up because that's kind of the piece, right? You're afraid of these emotions that come with taking the action because they seem scary or unsafe and doing the action of say posting the reel and then even after even more safety congratulating myself noticing the things that are coming up for me like oh my god nobody liked this reel in like the past 10 minutes but realizing okay you feel rejected right now like just like noticing all of that so that's I feel like before and after taking a specific action that Mm -hmm. I feel unsafe doing and then like noticing throughout the day what is the story that I'm telling myself about what I have to do in my business like how am I still talking to myself am I giving myself rest and breaks and just all of the things that I say I can't have yet until I've done xyz does that sound like the 10 ideal to you like (laughs) I can't be happy until I'm a certain weight now it's like I can't have rest until I reach a certain amount of money in my business Yep. exactly the same <laughs> yeah unless I check these boxes off yeah you're not deserving yet of a 20 minute nap or whatever yeah and it's very interesting because I remember when we introduced the self-care checklist or the whatever the way we talk about health we don't talk about health from a health behavior we talk about taking care of our body and how revolutionary the self-care checklist was for you because it was Something, I guess, that wasn't present or you didn't even consider self-care from that perspective? Yeah, I just even the term like I'm going to get healthy, like I want to be on a health journey because when I like decided I was kind of moving away towards a way weight loss and towards like health journey, wellness culture, but still like some weight loss in there. My whole idea of what even health meant is just like exercise and diet like that was really like when you think I'm going to start getting healthy I'm going to live a healthier lifestyle you just think about the food you're going to eat and how you're going to move your body and this checklist presented at least like 30 to 40 different ways of like if we're taking care of ourselves in that way or not and I didn't even realize that there's just so many ways to care of about yourself and to I still don't even like the word healthy, to be honest, but Mm -hmm. just like taking care of your health, like going to the dentist, getting regular checkups is taking care of yourself. There's so many things on there. I'm like, oh my God. Like you think that if you're not exercising or eating in a certain way, you're not taking care of yourself. But this list was so long. I'm like, oh, I'm doing a good amount of those. Like I am taking care of myself you're it's just like it opened up the door to all these ways that we 
can see health as and not just this two things like because well, it's it, fascinating what you're saying because you're saying like I am taking care of my health versus I need to try harder right like I'm failing already and it changes everything because if you can already believe you're taking care of yourself you're just going to do more of that yeah now you're going to be motivated right you're proud of yourself now and you're like wow what other ways can I add some of the self-care for myself versus living your life constantly feeling like you're failing at two things yeah. <laughs> when it's so much more than that and even like with one of my clients the other day she was like oh my gosh I made a doctor's appointment I went grocery shopping like she considers that like a big win for herself like she's been drinking more water like it's just so many things that sh- you can see wins in versus like just a small amount, like a little list. Like you can only win in this little list versus like, look at the vast amount of things that you can celebrate, which is huge. Cause then you just, yeah, like you said, you want, you're motivated now even more. This is how, this is, if you're listening to this as a life coach, this is how I want you to think about the impact of how yourself you're engaging with health, with food, with exercise, with your own body. Because if you carry these wellness culture thought, these fat phobic thought, these restriction thought, there is no way but avoiding transferring that to your client. You may not be coaching them directly in health, but you will be, you can only coach from your own reality. To me, this is why life coaching, because unfortunately it's a very fat phobic industry. We are perpetuating unknowingly diet culture and fat phobia because the brain of the coach is entrenched in it. That's my opinion. What is yours? Yeah, I definitely agree. If I wouldn't have seen this thing about the self-care, if my client had come to me like, I'm doing terrible at moving my body and I would have just coached her on like trying to maybe move more or like just accept the amount of movement she has, I wouldn't have been able to open it up. Like, what are the other ways you're already doing a great job at taking care of yourself? Like, what is everything you're already doing? I would not have seen that if I didn't see it in myself first. Yes. Yeah. So we have to close the interview that's been like flying by, but if you were speaking to a a group of life coach, what is the one thing you would share with them? I think the one thing I would share is thoughts and beliefs. It's all amazing to change and everything. But if we don't look behind that, it's going to be very hard to move forward. So kind of like when we were talking about, I was not looking behind the scarcity or what was going on behind the thought level. Like what is in between the circumstance and the thoughts? Mm. It's all of that. So that piece is very important. And we're doing great work in changing people's thoughts and the way they live and how they feel about themselves. But also looking at where all of this comes from, it's going to be revolutionary and change even just like in the non-diet world, how we live in our bodies and how we move forward in life and like how that impacts the generations to come. Because when we can see where this comes from, we can change that for the next generation right because if we're just changing thoughts and not trying to change what's behind that we just perpetuate the same cycles i'll give you an analogy and you tell me what you think of that it'd be like having a person of color a client let's say a black person living in the united states and never coaching on racism right yeah When you coach people identified as women who have lived most of their life in the identity of a woman, 
not talking about diet culture fat phobia is bypassing like a lot of things. Yeah. Right. Like it, it's yeah. an unfair coaching process because we're not bringing awareness to all that standing behind them. Just like racism for people of color is a fact. It's something they have to learn to live with. The same thing for people identified as women in with diet culture and fat phobia. Yeah. And addressing all of that is how you don't gaslight people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for having been with us today. I think sharing your journey as a life coach, I think will have a lot of impact on other coaches. So thank you for being here with us. Thank you so much, Stephanie. You're welcome. And you guys, I'll see you on the next podcast episode. Ready to shed diet culture from your practice and help more clients do the same? Awesome. We've got free resources to get you started. Simply go to stephaniedozier.com forward slash pro series, all in one word, and access our three free training classes that are currently available. We also have a free PDF guide to intuitive eating and article about the non-diet approach. We also offer a variety of paid programs throughout the year to support you in your journey to undiet your coaching practice. Join us at stephaniedoze.com forward slash pro series, and I'll see you on the other side.